a lovely morning to all of you and today more so because we have sunlight which has become so rare in bangalore so we, i was enjoying the morning sunlight and here i am with all of you okay to start with many of us did not particularly like uh, history when we were in school right so i take this vicarious pleasure in taking history lessons to people whenever i get a chance so let me take you back into history man the caveman prehistoric times was a very ordinary creature isn't it there were lions tigers there were uh, you know elephants there were even dinosaurs before uh, that all sorts of creatures who physically were far superior to human beings and they could easily attack and kill human beings we did not have the means to protect ourselves or to fight with them it is said that our superiority over all other living beings started when we found fire when human beings discovered that fire can be generated maybe by rubbing stones or whatever method they used and they could take some stalks of uh, wood and see to it that the fire continues when they took those logs of wood with and the fire the other animals got scared so fire became the first weapon which human beings used and thereby they could protect themselves they could you know stand on their own against animals which were much stronger and much faster than us that's how human beings progressed but according to me the real development the real you know breakthrough came when we learnt how to communicate which most animals have very limited forms they can only communicate by way of some animals use some particular words like barking or meowing or whatever they use certain sounds some animals have some other uh, means they communicate through smell or touch or whatever it is the caveman discovered drawing so even today you have caves which have been preserved over thousands and thousands of years where the caveman started doing drawings he would take a charcoal or whatever could make an impression on the wall of the cave and he would start drawing so when he could draw and he could communicate you know the next person who comes into that cave would see that and get a message so you see how communication went beyond being in physical presence so i could go to a cave make a drawing to depict something let's say that there is a tiger in the vicinity so i draw a tiger and i move on so the next person comes in has a look at that drawing of the tiger and says oh there seems to be a tiger here so i better protect uh, myself that's how the communication you know started and from pictures we graduated to alphabets and words today as you know we have got not hundreds but thousands and tens of thousands of languages different scripts different ways of uh, you know uh, writing down different alphabets different formation of words and the more that developed the more advanced we got because now human beings could write on whatever a palm leaf or a animal skin or a parchment or whatever it is and they could convey so in the olden days kings used to get a scribe and make that scribe write something on his behalf and the king would put his stamp or his you know seal or whatever it is and that document became authoritative he could send that hundreds of miles away and the other person at the end would know that this is what the king is commanding and he would have proof even if somebody questioned he would show that and say see here is the proof that there is a, you know the king has sent this uh, message similarly people started leaving behind messages for progeny wise people started writing their thoughts and that is what led to what we call today as scriptures be it the vedantas the upanishads the ramayana the mahabharata the bible the quran the uh, uh, guru granth sahib all these scriptures developed because we could write visualize a situation where we did not have the written word none of these religions would have existed 
some great wise man would have come into this world, given his preachings, given his wisdom, and once he dies, it would get diluted. People may not remember. People could, you know, misinterpret uh, it. And so all that wisdom would slowly disappear. But because of writing, it is preserved. In fact, so many scriptures have been preserved over thousands of years and people worship them and people follow them because they know that they are authentic. It has been put in black and white. That is how writing developed over the centuries. It gave us an edge over every possible living being. It made us the you know, species that today controls the whole uh, world. Then, of course, printing came. So you could convert your writing into multiple numbers. So instead of me writing on one sheet, I could now you know, reproduce hundreds of them, thousands of them, and then distribute uh, them. That was another step uh, um, forward. In fact, many of you may not even know. In my early days, there were still a few left. Printing used to be done by a process called lithography. Lithography was when a person, a scribe, would write something and on a particular type of uh, paper or parchment. And that used to be put on a printing machine. And from there, the image would reproduce uh, uh, itself. Later, of course, much more modern things have come in. But even as of 50 years back, I have seen lithographs, uh, uh, machines, and printing presses in my childhood. We used to use the basic writing even to reproduce in larger numbers. So that is how the evolution of human beings went. Today, as you know, communication has become so easy. Whether you want to send a WhatsApp message, whether you want to send an email, whether you want to write something on paper and send it, all that has now you know, become so, so, so easy and so common that we have taken it for granted. That is the sad part of it. Even though today, thankfully, small children are still taught how to write with their hand, with the pencil first or with the chalk, and then moving on to a pen. Children are taught how to write. Initially, when children are not good at writing, you have you know four parallel lines and you have to fit in the alphabets within that. You even have those books with that dot, 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 and the child has to take the pencil over those dots and then the alphabet is uh, uh, formed. From that stage, in a slow and laborious process, we teach every child how to write. In fact, we define people as literate and illiterate. We say X percent of the population is still, still illiterate, which we consider to be a very sad thing. We say, oh, so many people in villages and in remote areas are still illiterate. Why do we say that? Because they have not learned how to read and write. And we know how much they are missing out on life. How much they are having issues of non-progress because they are illiterate. And till people become literate. And that has been the mission of everybody. Governments, society, Everybody wants every person to be literate, which means to say every person should be able to use the written means of communication in whichever language uh, you have. And like I said, there's such a variety of languages. In our great country, India, we have innumerable uh, languages. We have so many different types of uh, uh, scripts. We even have scripts like Persian and uh, Urdu, which uh, are written from right to left, whereas most other languages are written from left to right. We have this uh, Japanese or Chinese, I'm not sure, which goes from top to bottom. So all these different types of scripts are there, different types of characters are there, different types of grammar is there, whatever it is. Now, what has been happening in the last one generation is my concern. Children are taught how to write. And then they are told that you have to write in the exam. Only if you pass the exam, then you are called literate and qualified. So they are forced to write. 
go on and on and on and on writing. I remember a history teacher who was telling her uh, uh, students, you know, in the exam, if a question comes, who was the greatest Mughal emperor? What is the answer? Akbar. One word. But she said, no. If you just write Akbar, you will not get marks. So you know how you should write? You should say that compared to ordinary people, some people were ruling and they were called kings. The biggest of the kings were called emperors. Emperors existed all over the world in different countries and different continents. In Asia and India also we had emperors. Some emperors became emperors individually and then they died. Some emperors passed it on to their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren and we call them dynasties. In India, right from thousands of years ago, we have had many dynasties. One of those dynasties was the Mughal dynasty, which was 400 years back. In that dynasty, there were a number of emperors. Some were very strong and good, some were not all that good. But among all these emperors, the person who stands out as the greatest and the most loved is the emperor called Akbar. Now a child would sit and think, ma'am, they asked who is the greatest emperor, can I not say Akbar? They would say no. So this poor child has to sit and write all that I told you just now. And the child develops an aversion, not only to the subject, but also to the concept of writing. Writing which can be such a pleasurable thing, now becomes a burden. I have to sit and write, my hand is paining, I'm feeling sleepy. No, 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 you have to write. Impositions are given, homework is given, and everywhere that it is given, there is small amount of thinking required, but large amount of writing, 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 writing required. In today's era, unless we make writing into a pleasure for our children. They are going to be continuously weaned away from and develop more and more of an aversion in writing. And with the way technology is making things easier to communicate, I wouldn't be surprised if we next develop a generation of children who do not know what is a pen or pencil and who do not know how to sit and write. Okay, so you will ask me what's wrong with it. As long as they can communicate. No? So they're doing it by keyboard. Today we have voice recognition also. So they don't even have to press keys. They speak to the computer and the computer writes the messages and all that. So why do we need to write is the question that I want to ponder upon. Because when you sit down with a pen or pencil and when you sit down to write, you bring out your innermost thoughts and feelings. It is a flow from one human being to another. And knowing that the handwritten thing goes to one specific person, it becomes very personal, it becomes very endearing, and it becomes very valuable. On a lighter note, there was this girl who told her best friend, you know, my boyfriend sent me a love letter and he wrote, my dearest, I love you more than anything else in this world. I will love you not only in this life, but in seven Janmas. You are the only girl for me. You are the most beautiful and the most wonderful person that I've ever met in my life. I am willing to sacrifice my life for you. I love you so much. You've got such excellent qualities. I never believed that a girl can have such qualities. And I am forever and forever your dearest so-and-so. She told her friend, my boyfriend sent me this letter. And I called him up and said, our relationship is over. Get lost. The friend asked her, why when he wrote such an endearing and loving letter, why did you do that? She said, because it was a Xerox copy. He had written that letter made copies and given it to a number of girls. You get the point that I'm trying to uh, say that if it had been an original handwritten letter, 
it would have beautifully connected and that girl would have felt so loved, so cared for and so belonged. And that is the beauty of, uh, you know, having uh, this. In fact, there are a few people still left over who do what we refer to as doodling. It need not even be actual words or something. People sit and they have some spare time. They have a paper and they have a pen and they start doodling. They may be making some shapes. They may be making some drawing something. They may be trying to convey something. And our Purnima happens to be one of them. And I'll ask her if she can show you the doodling that she's doing uh, sitting here right now. Just to show you that expression need not be restricted to this. Somewhere along the line, you will recollect that many of our, uh, uh, you know, people, particularly of the earlier generation who studied in the missionary schools and some such thing, we all had, you know, a thick, fat book which was very sacrosanct. I'm not talking about the Bible. It was called Ren and Martin, English Grammar. And Ren and Martin of English Grammar was like a Bible. Whatever Mr. Ren and Mr. Martin, whoever they were, God bless their souls, whatever they said was the Bible truth for the students. Ren and Martin said, E comes before I except in these, these, these. Ren and Martin said, P U T is put, B U T is but. If I questioned my teacher, why can't P U T be put and B U T be but? He would give me one put on my back and he would throw me out of, butt me out of the uh, class. And that was another thing which prevented us from learning, enjoying and cherishing language. Of course, thankfully, it is restricted to this very punny language called English. Thankfully, in our Indian languages, we do not have these problems. We are, most of them are phonetic. So the advantage is that what you see is what you get. So if it is a, a, e, e, u, u, you know that yes, it is exactly a, a, e, e. But in English, if there is an A or if there is an I or if there is a U, it can be pronounced in 10 different uh, ways. But looking at it a little deeply, that itself is a beauty by itself, isn't it? So what I uh, keep saying is, firstly, writing sharpens your brain. There's no doubt about it. You can talk to people who are, uh, you know, accomplished neurologists. Writing is one thing which keeps your brain sharp right up to the later years of your life. And there is a threat that you may start developing dementia or losing your memory. Writing helps you to keep your brain sharp and to keep accepting, you know, your uh, uh, memory, building on your memory, keeping your memory uh, sharp. Writing, as I said, is such a personal thing which helps people to bond with each other. There are occasions where if I've written a small note and given it to somebody, something small, appreciative, it's not that that person is the most important person in my life or something like that. But just I care for that person and I write a genuine note and I give it to him or her. And that person tells me that after so many months, so many years, I still preserve. Once in a while, I still read that which also happens to the assessments that we do in our courses that we run here, the diploma in counseling skills, for example, there's no exam, but we ask people to write assignments based on their real life experiences. And very often, particularly in the earlier years before, you know, electronics became so common. I used to take those, uh, you know, the assignments and I used to write, I use a green pen generally. So I used to write my comments sign my name and give it back to them. And I used to find that people have preserved it over the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That is something which cannot be replaced by any other uh, forms. It is said that when you are doing the writing, no, more of the neural connections are activated and formed within your uh, brain. As I keep uh, reminding people, neurology is taking very rapid strides and we are finding out a lot of things about our brain which we never knew. 
and one of them is this that writing engages you know more and more of this neural connection that means the neurological connections or the wires you may call within the uh, brain so that has already become a proven uh, um, fact writing by hand improves the memory is also being now propagated by a lot of uh, you know um, experts it is said that people who have a habit of writing they develop skills the same way as a person who is let's say a athlete or a sportsman or a person who's a musician what do they do they practice 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 and they become great in their activity be it athletics be it sports be it music be it whatever it is so same thing happens to people who develop the habit and continuously keep you know uh, writing writing as you know gives you the opportunity to stop and think very often we use words we say something impulsively and we regret why did i say that it can also spoil relationships but when i sit down to write i write think write think the great one of the greatest living writers in india is ruskin bond i think he is an unsung hero he should have got much more accolades than what he has got ruskin bond still says that i do not use computers i either write by hand or i type it on my manual typewriter and he says that my trash bin the waste paper basket next to my table gets piled up with rejected uh, uh, you know papers because i write something and i say no this is not good enough i want to make a change i crumple that paper and throw it into the waste paper basket take another sheet of paper and start all over again such a creative activity such an absorbing activity and finally the product that comes out after so much thought and all that becomes such a valuable thing to the person who is receiving uh, it there are people there used to be people rather who used to write diaries and journals i don't know how many are still doing it if you are still doing it hearty congratulations please do not stop whatever may be the technological advances write a diary write a journal write take a notepad and keep writing down your uh, thoughts whenever you want to similarly write to people you know that social contacts social interactions are the spice of life they activate us so much they stimulate us so much more than anything else and one of the ways to ensure that you are keeping that in individual attention is by writing let me also tell you that okay even if you don't want to take a pen and paper and write you know given that up a simple thing like you know sending a message through your phone now i do not have any of the social media i don't use whatsapp and all those things but i do send text messages whenever i'm concerned about somebody whenever i want to reach out to somebody i send a text message and i encourage people whenever you feel that you want to just you know touch base with me or express something to me please feel free to send me a, a text message you'll be surprised so many times when i send text messages to people they don't read it they say i only check my whatsapp i don't check my sms because nobody sends me sms but the difference is whatsapp is a collective messenger service most people post something on whatsapp to a group which can consist of five people 50 people 500 people but a text message which i send i am formulating the words typing it in and sending it only to you because you are important to me i will not repeat that message to somebody else if two friends of mine have a birthday on the same day i draft two different birthday messages because both of them you know have different characteristics my relationship with them is different so i don't just cut and paste and a birthday message and send it off these are such simple things which are you know available uh, to uh, us also people who are polyglots people who know more than one language you're very lucky because you've developed that talent 
and I request you to please use it. You may be doing most of your writing in English, for example. But if you have an old grandmother or even, you know, some old uh, acquaintance or somebody who is not into electronic uh, media, who is not into English, but you can write in your mother tongue, which is his or her mother tongue, and send off a personal message. Do you know that there is still a thing called the postal department existing? There are post boxes and there are post offices. It requires 50 paisa if you want to buy a postcard. It takes 2 rupees 50 paisa for an inland letter and 5 rupees for an envelope in which you can write anything and put papers uh, inside. There is still a pleasure of receiving mail, what we are now referring to as snail mail. There's something personal, there's something really important uh, in that uh, thing. And as I said, let all your writing and all your messages, as far as possible, be as you know personal, as warm. Not necessarily on occasions. I always remember a friend of mine, she's no more, who had once sent me a birthday card. And in that she had written, I know that this is not your birthday and your birthday is far from uh, here. But why should I restrict my greetings only on that specific day? The very fact that you are born is important to me. So therefore, I'm sending you a birthday card, knowing fully well that it is not your uh, birthday. It is so touching when people say that. I also wanted to share with you something very, very uh, interesting. You can Google it and see. In Maharashtra, between the two hill stations of Mahabaleshwar and Panjgani, there is a small village called Bhilar, B-H-I-L-A-R. For many, many years, I've had a friend in Bombay. He was a police officer, he retired recently as an assistant commissioner of uh, police. His name is Bilar A. That means belonging to Bilar. And he had told me in those good old days when I used to go to Mahabaleshwar, go and meet my father. He lives in our hometown. I had gone and met his father and I've seen that little village. Lately, I came to know that the entire village has been converted into a library. Every house has started stocking up books. And they invite people who are visiting those hill stations, drive down, come here, sit in our house and read whatever books you want to read over here. What a wonderful gesture, an entire village which has become a library. It's such a blessing to children today if you can take your children to such a uh, place. These are the little gestures which are like bubbles here and there. But if all of us can become aware of the need, the advantages and the joys of writing, I think we can do wonders with it. I think we can reopen something which we are slowly losing out on. We progress because of writing and let us not regress by forgetting how to write. Let us preserve something like how you preserve an antique which your grandfather gave you or certain traditions or certain things. This is also as important as that. I sincerely mean it. Please get into the habit of reading and writing. Even reading is becoming very, very rare. Read as much as you can. Write as much as you can to whoever you can. You write to yourself also like a diary and journal, but do reach out to others through this means of writing. Whoever is important to you, whoever you care for, and whoever you want to make that gesture with, do it and see the impact it has on the other uh, people. If you can do that, you're opening doors to another wonderful facet of your life, something which can be very joyous and something which can be a permanent asset. Once you get habituated to it, then it becomes very easy. It becomes second nature for you to just pick up a pen and keep writing a note or keep writing a postcard or whatever it is. Please do that and allow me to take a quick break. Purnima is here to tell you one or two, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, uh, announcements and along with that, maybe she'll show you her doodling, which also keeps her brain very, very active and I should be back within a minute. See you.
go good morning yeah nice to see so many of you all and i as i keep uh, repeating week after uh, week i wish that um, i can see you all also you know see that smile on your face or see that acknowledgement and i can you know wave out and receive your uh, waves i would really you know love to uh, wait for that day when facebook makes it uh, both ways yeah i have this habit of just drawing some rangoli types from uh, time to time when i'm just sitting it helps me to concentrate uh, better when you know i'm doing something so that naturally keeps going around uh, but at the same time um, i can concentrate better on the listening so while i was listening to ali i'll tell you what i was doodling okay i don't know if you can see it not very very clear uh, this but okay maybe i'll do it like this i keep making some rangoli types like this i'm not um, greatly creative but i keep doing something like this from uh, time to time and then i'll keep uh, writing something and you know i i, I have that habit so uh, in this uh, break i would like to uh, uh, good morning satyavati uh, i would like to uh, tell a few things one is that anish was putting up a, a poster which is our course which is a post graduate diploma in psychotherapies okay now there are quite a few um, you know uh, students or people who have done their um, bachelors in psychology but then they wish that um, they could do some understand psychology so that you know it's it's a lot more uh, practical so basically i i would say that this is a theory course in a very practical way so that is our course a lot of uh, uh, people who are counselors they do this so that they can get little hang of the different uh, psychotherapies so that's beginning uh, from um, november 28th onwards it will be uh, you know in the wonderful hands of uh, two excellent faculty members who are so closely associated with uh, banjara they are dr lakshmi and dr chandra so it's a fantastic uh, combo of that uh, duo and uh, if any one of you is interested or if you think that that can uh, help someone without you know some of them don't really want to do a full time um, course you know from any uh, university because there is a lot of theory so much to write so much to read so much to write your for your marks and things like that whereas here nothing like that uh, needs to be done and the other very important information and a very happy information which i would like to share with you all is that uh, on december 10th that is second saturday of every uh, december uh, we have what we call as a helping hand annual day so banjara has this arm service arm which is called helping hand and we have you know through so many 39 years uh, through these 39 years we have around 400 to 450 different volunteers who offer their services in you know hospitals and uh, centers and just as a mark of our gratitude and happiness that we have the opportunity of knowing such lovely wonderful people we uh, celebrate uh, annual day for all of them so that's the news from banjara because what we do is we call them up some of them don't have um, uh, telephones or you know or they may not have um, whatsapp or things like that so we try different methods and we have a, such a wonderful team who's sitting down there making calls speaking to them checking if you know somebody is ill uh, if they are indisposed then we go and meet them so a lot of action is happening and even if any one of you wants to offer your services uh, as a helping hand volunteer please please feel free to get in touch with us all that you need is just uh, say around 3 4 hours of your time even in a weekly basis even that's uh, good enough and we can sit down and over this cup of uh, hot tea you know we can share the joys of uh, volunteering and i'll be more than happy if you even just drop in at the uh, academy if you want to be a volunteer yourself but right now we are hands full and busy planning what to do for all the volunteers what menu and how to receive them what to do which biscuits to buy even those things are kept in uh, mind so while you are thinking whether to become a volunteer and when to come and join us 
I will hand over uh, this session to Ali for all the questions that you may have in your mind. Ciao. Yes, I'm back and I have noticed a few interesting comments and questions, starting with Asha, who's saying, often we ask children to write rather than just read. Does registering and recalling become easy when we write? 100% right, Asha. Writing is one way when we teach children different ways of learning. Every child is unique. Some child remembers better if he reads aloud rather than, uh, you know, softly. Some child uh, uh, comprehends better if he walks around rather than sitting in one place. Some Many children remember better when they write down the things. If they don't even want to write down the whole lessons, ask them to write keywords. Ask them to write bullet points. Sometimes we encourage children to write the most important formulae or whatever definitions or something in big letters and put it up on the wall. So that even while walking around and doing your other activities, once in a while you see that and it becomes like a reminder or like a revision. Mm. Next one. No, the same thing is coming back. Okay, shall I read out? Takila says, I love writing. I keep expressing my thoughts in the form of poems to my near and dear ones on special occasions. If I don't, they ask for it. See, here's direct, you know, evidence of it. And Akila says, uh, writing, uh, uh, you know, it gives out so much of things. Here are real life examples. People like you and me, if you, we, we just learn from their experiences. You will get inspired. You will get motivated if you talk to friends who are into this uh, uh, habit. And as she has rightly said, if I don't, you know, send some form of my poems or whatever it is, they ask for it. In fact, we have asked for her poem to be published, one of her very nice poems, which we are going to publish in this issue of Banjara uh, Life. Which I is, would like to add something. Please here. do, please do. Quickly, I would like to add uh, something. You all must be knowing, right? Ali has this habit of uh, writing. So we are so used to receiving small slips and notes and letters from him that if we don't get a letter from him, it's almost like, is he upset with me or why is he not giving it to me? And then we go and tell him, Ali, long time you have not given anything. <laughs> yeah, Ali. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yes, very true. And... Uh, Dharmi says it's a real pleasure to write and receive letters. Yes, and I am a pen friend of Dharmi. She is my old uh, you know, student, but now more a friend, a wonderful doctor who does excellent work, you know, reaching out as a doctor to patients in the rural areas where there are no medical facilities available. But he still finds time to write letters, and it's a pleasure to receive his letter and to write back uh, uh, to him. Ah, Satyavati says, what to do when a child keeps writing but never opens her mouth to read or express? Now, she is expressing by her writing. So what I would do if I was you know, connected to this child was to read what she has written, comment on it, clarify on it, write back to her, encourage her. Make her tell about what made her write this and what made her write that. Maybe in the presence of a third person, if my relative or my good friend comes over, I would, you know, in the presence of the child say, oh, she writes so beautifully. You know, yesterday she wrote this, this, this. Let me read it out to you. So she understands the value of her communication, that people value it. And then gently ask, you know, this uh, you wrote two days back, isn't it? So even when she starts replying in monosyllables, uh, no, not yesterday. I wrote it day before yesterday. So now she has started opening out and talking. So that is how you gently prod that child. But I'm glad that she has the habit of writing. Okay. There are some nice comments also. Munira says, awesome. Satyavati says, so nice. 
Satyavati also says good morning to Purnima, but not to me. Anyway, I will say good morning to you, Satyavati. Now, a lot of these uh, uh, things, even for example, asking you to write on this chat box. It is such a pleasure that when you write uh, uh, something and put it up on the uh, chat box, no? a simple thing like just now, Ranjulata has written wonderful session, Dr. Ali. It means a lot to me. It gives me that inspiration. It gives me that motivation to continue with whatever little you know, mission that I have uh, taken up. And that is the thing, not uh, express written letter, but using this opportunity of today's you know, FB live webinar to just put in that one line of appreciation over here, right? Shobha says, uh, yes, Ali, wish me my birthday wishes. It made me always memorable and you give beautiful thoughts. Thank you, Shobha. That's what I always try to do whenever it is possible because each one of you is valuable to me. I connect on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis, right? So these are the small things which I really uh, uh, feel. No, you need not feel uh, sorry, Satyavati. It is always a pleasure. And I know that you are logging in and joining us and participating, which itself gives a lot of boost. See, if you people were not writing in the uh, chat box, I wouldn't know what thoughts are going on in your mind, isn't it? Okay. Ranjanath says, I have stored all the handwritten letters with me of last 25 years and keep reading them whenever I feel down. See, it's like a treasure trove. How some people, you know, have, as I mentioned earlier, a scripture or a holy book or something. And when you feel, uh, you know, down and out, you read that uh, thing. So the same thing people do with letters, with messages which have come, with notes which have being written to us, we preserve them and we go ahead and uh, so many of my counselees have said the same thing, right? Roshan says, my mother would long to receive letters from her sons. It was a joy to receive their letters that it made her arthritis a little better. And letters can be preserved and read over a period of time. Yes, that is there. But I mean, this is amazing. Know that it makes her arthritis better. Arthritis is definitely has, has a psychosomatic element that is the mind over the body and that's why you know even surgeons say that sometimes no i don't know how to control or uh, you know relieve your uh, arthritis but maybe letters can do what doctors and physicians and surgeons cannot uh, uh, do it does make a difference that when this lady in her sunset years receives these letters from her sons or whoever are her loved ones now how she feels to it i had never uh, you know learned my mother tongue uh, formally I had learned English, Hindi, little bit of Marathi and all those things. But when my grandmother grew very uh, old and I realized that she's very lonely and I'm not living in the same city, I practiced writing in my uh, mother tongue and I started writing letters to her. When she passed away, my aunt said the whole heap of letters which I had written to her, she had kept under her pillow on her bed. What a joy. It gave me such an inspiration even after she's uh, gone away, right? Ha! Akira says, I would like to thank the Banjara team for acknowledging and appreciating my writing and publishing it in Banjara Life. Thank you for wonderful birthday wishes. I was amazed and felt loved. Gratitude. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Akira. We all feel loved. We feel belonged. We feel connected through the written word. And that goes beyond this. I could also, you know, uh, meet you uh, face to face and say happy birthday or whatever it is. Yes, you'll feel nice at that moment, but that's it. The moment is over. But if I write something, it can be preserved. Ah, Sri Devi has written after a long time, writing meditation. No surprise if it works for health issues uh, too. Very true. Very true. That is what, you know, we uh, find. And that is what, see, your little one-liner has connected us back to you after such a long time. We used to have such wonderful time in Banjara with you and your daughter. And now that you've gone away to a different city, we miss you. And we get that joy of reconnecting with you just through that one line that you, you know, took the trouble of writing through this uh, chat box. Ah, Satyavati says, I've stored all my sessions in uh, Banjara. Excellent. Raja sir's remarks. You, some of you may not know him. Raja Reddy was a very, very dear friend and a strong pillar of Banjara. He passed away 11 years uh, uh, back. 
and there are many people who still remember him because of uh, the writing that he used to give despite the fact that his handwriting was so difficult that some of them had to really you know read 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 and try to decipher but they valued the sentiment it was nothing to do with the handwriting Rita says, good morning, Dr. Ali. Although we are connected now through social media, but still I enjoy writing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not belittling social media or technology. I'm not saying it is bad. I'm not saying keep away from it. But don't let it dominate you. Don't let it become the end all and be all where, you know, everything becomes a mass thing. So you put up one message and 50 people are reading it and nobody really knows what uh, it is all about. And there is no personal touch uh, uh, in that uh, thing. Yes, Ranjulata says, these personalized comments motivates me. Thank you so much, Dr. Ali. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I have also kept your handwritten comments on my assignments of life skill course, which I did in 2012, 10 years uh, back. Thank you so much. That really inspires me when I, you know, get such written uh, feedback from you uh, people. Roshan says, receiving love letters also can be preserved and read when you're feeling down and out. It helps you overcome depression. Yes. And when you say love letters, I'm only not restricting it to romantic love. You may love your parent. You may love your child. You may love your best friend. But when there is love expressed in a letter, I think that really binds people uh, together. And that is what I have been saying and I keep emphasizing uh, on that this is a skill which we learned over thousands of years from the time the caveman learned how to make drawings on the caves to creating language, to creating alphabets, converting them into words and sentences. Today, we have such a treasure trove. Even if you read up, whichever is your mother tongue or your you know, basic language from your elders, Ask them, there is such a great treasure or literature available in those languages, which you will not get through English. If you have, that's what I said. I have nothing against English. I love English. And I, I, as Amitabh Bachchan said, I talk English, I walk English, I sleep English, I laugh English. But yet, to me, our own languages matter a lot. Whichever may be our language, the language of my neighbor, the language of my colleague, all these matter to me. Whenever somebody comes out with some quote or something in their own mother tongue, I always take interest and ask, oh, this is what it says. This is what you do in your language. This is how you express, which also brings me to another very interesting uh, uh, point. This simple little phrase in English, which is called, I love you. Do you know what is its equivalent is in your own mother tongue? And of course, you will know because, I mean, you know your language well enough, so you know what the thing means. But my question is, how often do you use it? Do you write those words and give it to somebody? One thing which I've been uh, you know, recommending since a very, very long time is you get these small yellow post-it you know, papers. There are a pad of papers with some gum behind it. So you peel off one paper, write whatever you want, and it sticks anywhere. It can stick onto your table or on a wall, on the fridge, inside the tiffin box. If you can just write one, one line, two lines, expressing your love for that person, when that person is not around and that person reads it, you remember that uh, Bollywood film, what was it? The film box. Lunch box. Lunch box. You know, where this uh, lady used to write little notes, uh, you know, uh, and put it in the tiffin box of her husband. Of course, the, the film took a twist because that uh, tiffin box started reaching a total stranger and that fellow uh, was very happy that he's getting, you know, love notes and this and that. All that went on. But the basic fact that gets emphasized is that we do cherish, we do appreciate, we do feel loved and warm when we receive these, you know, written uh, notes. Ali? Yeah. Doctors, mm. uh, Dr. Sai, that's your message being read out. He's not able to come on to the uh, chat, chat box. Side. Okay. 
So he has written that tell Ali, I have awarded him the title of MACLC, Matt LC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which means Master of Art and Craft of Letter Writing. Fantastic. So Thank that's you. for Thank you. you. Thank He's you. saying I'm not able to connect. Doesn't matter. Whichever mode you use, that's what I keep telling. It is not important which mode you are using. But the fact is that you took the trouble of sending this message while we are on so that we could even read it out to the other people and help us to understand, right? Okay. The next one, Roshan says, we have to be thankful that we can write. Recently, I went to an institute where children find it difficult even to hold a pencil, we are lucky to hold something to write. Yes, these are the learnings of life, uh, Roshan. And as you very rightly said, we have taken literacy and writing as granted. There are so many people who are illiterate. Even today in the 21st century, in our own country, there are children, there are adults who are illiterate. Even if we can teach them, if you are, know any illiterate person, if you can slowly start teaching him or her, one by one, small, small things. One of the things which a friend of mine uh, does very diligently is, when he comes across an illiterate person, he teaches him how to sign his name. So he explains the alphabets, he puts it down, and then he makes him practice how to sign his name. And the pride that that illiterate person develops because now he is able to, you know, sign his name and he goes on signing his name anywhere and everywhere, you know, just to show people that, yes, I know how to sign my name. Such a small thing, but it makes so much difference in the uh, life. Okay. Yes. Ramakoti is one writing therapy. My grandmother, mother and mother-in-law used to follow till many follow that therapy. Yes, absolutely. There are so many different ways. Each one of us have had access to something we need to share with each other also. And we can share it in writing because then everybody will be able to benefit from it. It will remain permanently with the uh, person. These are things which we need to give uh, you know, emphasis uh, uh, to. And we should make it a practice. We should be a role model to the younger uh, generation even if you find that they are not happy. In fact, one of the things which I have greatly admired is the Montessori method of education. Those of you who know uh, it would be aware of the fact that in a Montessori, they don't uh, make a child you know, grasp a pencil and start writing A, B, C, D. They do simple things like making the child write on sand. So the finger moves on sand. It may not even be visible. You can't make out what uh, uh, alphabet is being drawn. But the fine motor skills of the child, as they call it, they develop. How to make the hand go round, go up, go down, go left, go right. So a simple thing like, you know, writing in sand sharpens these fine motor uh, skills. The child learns how to use his fingers, how to become dexterous. And then they bring them to writing on a piece of paper using a uh, pencil. Such small things encourage that child to write. If the child says, I want a chocolate. Okay, where will you buy that chocolate from? No, that shop is there on nearby. You give me money, I'll go and buy. What is the name of that uh, 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 shop? He will say some modern traders or Sri Lakshmi Bhavan or whatever uh, it is. You say, write it down. Write down what is the name of that thing. Write down the name of the chocolate that you want to buy. Write down the price of uh, uh, it and then go and buy that uh, thing. Now his enthusiasm because he's going to get that uh, chocolate becomes so much that very happily he will write down. There are so many such small, 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 small techniques by which we can make writing a joy for uh, uh, children. We can even make it writing a joy for elderly people. Like I told you when I used to write to my grandmother, she used to take the trouble of writing back. She was not very good. Her fingers and hands were giving trouble. But she used to insist that I will write. At least one sentence, two sentences she used to uh, write. Similarly, long back, I had a pen friend who was very severely spastic. Her hand movement was very restricted. Only in a particular position with that, uh, you know, pen's uh, uh, 
uh, tied to her wrist using that uh, you know uh, something to tie it uh, um, on the velcro she would start moving her hand and it would create some words and sentences it took me a long time to decipher and to start reading it fluently but i did it and for years we used to be writing she used to live in another city at the other end of the country for years we used to be writing and it used to be always a pleasure to receive and remember and she couldn't talk she was so severely spastic that she couldn't talk so for a person like that who cannot communicate by words like how one of you said that you know we are so happy that we know how to write we should rejoice that same way there are some of us who cannot even speak there are autistic children who are non verbal they cannot uh, you know communicate by mouth and by uh, uh, speech now imagine if you teach that particular child or that particular adult how to communicate through writing and there again technology comes into uh, play there is so much that we can learn through technology of devising alternative uh, methods to write i had a friend who was an illustrious uh, you know uh, fighter pilot uh, in the indian air force and he had a very bad accident he was, he was paralyzed neck down he used to hold a pen in his mouth and ask his attendant to put a writing board on a clamp in front of uh, him and by movement of his mouth he used to write he had such a beautiful handwriting and he used to regularly write uh, to me for years and uh, Uh, years imagine if a person can take the trouble of holding a pen in his mouth and laboriously you know carving out each alphabet and each word and sentence but he used to write a full page letter expressing all his experiences joys you know curiosities everything he used to uh, write aren't we very lucky that we can write so easily so fast and so simply by our hands because we have received an education and we come under the category of being literate uh, uh, people and i also wanted to tell you i had learned this uh, you know from a student of mine who had a very bad motorcycle accident and his right hand was crushed and at that time doctors had said that though we are doing some surgeries you may or may not get back full use of your right hand now he used to always write with his right hand right so he started learning how to write with the left hand and that is how you things uh, went ah satyavati you have brought back such wonderful memories my student named sarthak kamat wrote all his exams on his own though he had a scribe he was a victim he is a victim of muscular dystrophy he completed his mbbs with merit he fought his way through to get admission in md he completed his md and he was a distinction student in mbbs out of 150 students he was second rank in that he completed his md in psychiatry and today he is an assistant professor of uh, psychiatry in ambedkar uh, uh, medical uh, college with whatever difficulties he was always sarthak insisted that i want to write i want to speak even his speech is very slurred but he would make it a point to speak to people to write and all these things have been so wonderful yes satyavati you have played a very great role in promoting you know people like sarthak and uh, uh, the way you have done it and i'm glad you are still in touch next time you uh, communicate with him please convey my best wishes and my blessings to him because he's a great role model to so many others who have limitations so with that we are coming to the sound of the noon you know tong 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 will be happening so i will now wind up this session take your uh, leave and anis will tell you the next topic that is going to happen on next saturday which is the bucket list please google and check out what is bucket list you will know what it is all about and we'll have a lively discussion next saturday 3rd december at 11 o'clock on what can be a good bucket list thank you and bye bye